Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan. And as you see, we do not have a Wendy here today. I actually just to let, give you a heads up on Wendy's recuperation. She had her eye surgery at uh, several weeks ago. And now apparently she's going to have another surgery on her other eye. So she shared with me that she would like to take some time off maybe until the first of the year just to, to heal and recuperate and, and all that. So in the meantime, I have Bud Vino with me as my co-host. Welcome, Bud. Thank you, Danica. And we still have that drumming in the background. I do. Um, oh, okay. Well, you can blame me. I'm the new one on, on here. First of all, Danica, thank you very much. It's Thanksgiving week. And as you said, uh, Wendy will be out for a little bit. And I'm honored to temporarily fill in for the great Wendy Perry. Wendy and I are good friends. She's a wonderful woman. And I, I thank you, Danica, for having me come fill in. And the pre-show, we've talked in the past. I told you before the show, we could do a show all night. I could tell that already. It's going to be great and empowering. Thank you to both you and Wendy. Yes, and I, you know, we were talking before the show and understanding that it is Thanksgiving week. And as we all know, with parenting, especially parenting of minor children, there is that awkward exchange and, and getting off of the school routine so that one parent or the other can have the whole Thanksgiving week. And of course, it represents family and it also can represent sadness and aloneness. Uh, in that week and actually it's the predecessor to like a whole month of holidays that are wrapped around family that can bring a lot of parents uh, into a real sad and disempowered space. So that's kind of something that I wanted to address and I also wanted to address strategies on how we could possibly shift out of that negative uh, space that doesn't serve us. So, Bud, what are your thoughts? Well, many. First of all, that's a great uh, thing to bring up over this uh, Thanksgiving week, as you mentioned, uh, Danica. And what I always say, I myself have been homeless on Thanksgiving in the past. I'm very fortunate now and blessed uh, that I'm not and have a beautiful family. And this was years ago. But my point is, what, al what always got me through, as opposed to as hard as it is, in those moments for the people out there that might be spending Thanksgiving in their car or less than that. If you're in your car, be thankful for the car. Mm -hmm. And think of what will be the great things, not the negative. You can't have a positive life thinking negatively all the time. You can't live a positive life. You can't. So as hard as it is, and, and, and people get upset out there, especially in the moment, sometimes it's hard to hear. And we're all human. Sometimes it's hard to hear that. But you've got to hold on to that tomorrow. Okay, this sucks, but this is going to be, I'm going to remember this and get excited because it's going to be part of my victory dance in the end. This is going to make me stronger, and I'm going to love harder and appreciate more. This is the universe throwing this at me to teach me a lesson. So when I, I'm at a table in the future, I'm going to look at everybody, really take it all in and be appreciative. This is just part of your journey, the people that may be down, down this holiday week. You're down, but you're not out. Keep loving, Danica. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I found that, like, um, just focusing on on gratitude, focusing on what you have and what you want, um, not what you don't want. If you find your conversations, uh, including the words don't, not, no, then that's a sign that your brain is actually amplifying more of what you don't want. And um, they, go ahead. Say, they say can't is the real C word. So, <laughs> so you... You've put it well. Yeah, it's, it's exactly right, Danica. You've got to put those intentions out there, that positive energy, and you will get that in return. And I mentioned before the show, and I've mentioned it to Wendy, even us coming together like this, you are what you eat. You, you are what you attract what you are. Um, and if you give into that authentically, again, that's why we're together here, very, very viscerally and organically. And, if, and I, I always implore people, do what feels right. If something feels off, it's because it is. So I go with that flow and I don't let anything, especially now you learn as you get older and every year I learn more and I can't believe how dumb I was the year before, but don't let anyone get to your peace. And that's hard. We talked about that off the air too, Danica, that, that, that center. Sometimes you feel right on and sometimes you feel way off. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, uh, I've, I'm thinking about like right now during this holiday season, it definitely resonates with me in regards to my children. I, my, my children are now older, they're, they're in their 20s and, um, and they, now they struggle. It's something that I have to, I work with them to deal with the trauma that they experienced when they were children and going through the divorce battle, the custody, just like ev all of it. And just when you think that your parenting job is over just because they, you know, they're out of the nest and they're 21 and older, doesn't, you know, then you get this new wave of them having to deal with their own adult life, maybe their own families, and they're, and they're having breakdowns. And a lot of it was from the past. And it really wants me, I really want to um, blame and make wrong and, 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 you know, and really focus on that, the, 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 the past that I can't do anything about. I cannot do anything about changing the past. All I can do is be in the here and the, and the now. And, uh, and do you have some advice to help with parents who are, who are maybe struggling with that same thing? Because holidays amplify everything, the, the do, wonderful we? things and the not so wonderful things. Right, they do. And I know suicide rates are at their highest around this time of year. I, I, I always say, too, um, along with focus on the finish, um, you mentioned gratitude. And, and again, being grateful for what you have, even if, even if it's not something tangible, a relationship, somebody in your life, something. Um, and, and also, that includes yourself. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, you know, this, when, we, when we suffer from depression, you've got to remember, and I'm not minimizing anybody's struggle, but it's because we're not living up to you know, societal standards, standards, so to speak. If we, all, if we were secluded, we wouldn't be, have these disappointments in ourselves because of these standards we're held to. What you have to do is believe in yourself and love yourself. And through these tough times, again, when you, when you feel like you have nothing, you have to look at it as your armor being built up. Because every day you wake up, your heart's still beating. Still there. Oh, I'm still alive. I'm, I'm here. Wow, I'm not dead yet. I thought I was going to be dead. No, I'm not. So what am I going to do to spin this in a good way? Um, and you've got to do that every day. As hard as it is, we talked about it again. I say this a lot because, and I will, mm -hmm. off the air, Danica. Sometimes you have to submit and say, today sucks. You know, it, it's a bad day. I'm going to submit to the pain because pain is real. So you can't uh, suppress that um, and, and think you're not going to blow at one point. So sometimes you have to give into that. And do what makes you feel good, but set a time limit for yourself. Okay, I, tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to push myself forward. It's just like a diet, Danica, and I've mentioned this before, when it comes to that positive mindset. And I'm going to give out a shout out to my brother-in-law, Joe Martin, out there. We had a conversation like this a little bit ago. I said, there's no such word as regrets. There isn't. You can never, ever regret. That's the stupidest thing in the world. It's self-abuse. It's not productive. I don't do anything that isn't productive. So... <clears throat> excuse me, regret, is, it, it just, it, it, it makes no sense. I don't even use the words things that have happened to me. I say things I've experienced because for me, I never want to put that victimization mentality in myself, the woe is me thing. When I was younger, I always led with my sob story. A lot of us do because that's the only way we know how to communicate or get that sort of attention that we crave. That, so we lead with all the things that have happened to us. Um, and, and again, that's not healthy. You have to, start, again, your story starts today if, you're, if your past story sucks. You write your book 100%. And you've got to look at everything. Okay, this is horrible in the moment, but it's making me tougher. I can't believe I've got through this. And I'm tougher. I'm stronger every day. I can feel it. And that's what you got to do. But again, no such thing as regrets. I don't even say, again, things that happen to me. I don't say anything like that. What you go back to unburden. You don't go back to beat yourself up. You go back to analyze. I do. And I implore others to do that, to go back and say, okay. How could I be better for the next time this situation happened? Not, oh, you know, this, again, it's not minimizing, but you, it's just like a diet. It takes a lot of us years, Danica. We're not born hating ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not born, it, we're, again, we're innately loving, we're innately happy. Things beat us up, right? And it's just like a diet when you gain too much weight. It's a habit, and it's the same with your mind. You get new habits of negativity, and you don't even realize it. So I tell people, you have to actually physically stop yourself. As corny as it might sound, nope, I'm going to put something positive in my mind. It's just like a diet. You have to work at it every day, just like you're working out. 
And then all of a sudden you go, whoa, I'm doing this every day. This seems to be much progress. And all of a sudden it just comes, boom. Wow, look at that bicep. It's the same repetition. As much repetition as it took to get you in this negative place, it's going to take just as much, if not more, in terms of effort to get you out of it, Danica. And it can be hard. It can be hard, but everybody can do it out there. It's the, what I always say is my word creates my world. I really, it is very important to be, to be profoundly connected to words that come out of your mouth. And of course, the words that don't come out of your mouth that are in your head to, to catch them in the moment. And the more, every time you catch yourself, you get more aware and more present to the things that you're thinking and the things that you're saying and how they impact you. And the other thing is, is like you said, is don't be a victim. You know, you understand that your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts, just like when you say, uh, I wouldn't even say I am sick. You know, I'm, I'm that, that says I am sickness. No, I am feeling sickness, but I am not sick. Right. I'm feeling sadness, but I am not sad. Great point. Great. And, and, and it's all on those same lines. That's a great way to do it. It's exactly. And it's those seemingly little things, Danica, that aren't little. They start to build those things all in combination and that forward progress. Since we're mm -hmm. at the holiday time of the year, like that snowball down a hill, right? It turns into a big giant one by the bottom that's unstoppable. Just like mm -hmm. everybody else there, including us, Danica, and Custody Matters Live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, um, it's, it's not an easy uh, thing, and, and I really, um, do you, I, so I'm thinking, okay, so the parent who are, has no child during this Thanksgiving season, and actually during the whole Christmas season, they're, um, they're childless for maybe, maybe it's just not their turn that year, or maybe they're, they don't have access to their child. I, I'd love for us to think about what would help them in getting through this holiday season? Well, what I would encourage, number one, of course it hurts, and I've been there. Um, but what I encourage people to do is do what makes you happy that day. Again, it's okay to, to love your children. You can love them from a distance, and that's all you can give them if you, that's all you can give them on that day is that love from afar. They do feel it. You've got to remember that. If that's all you can give is say, I love you to my son or my daughter out there, really sit down and feel it. They'll feel it. Again, hate is cumbersome. It's a burden. It's not natural. Love is. So, again, as you said, thoughts are things. So be selfish on that day. Again, there is a healthy level of narcissism, and selfishness is not a bit necessarily a bad word. Again, some, oh, God, selfish. No, it's good to take care of yourself. It's good to do things that you enjoy, uh, Danica. So I encourage people to do so. Watch a movie that they might like that day. Go and, and do something that they might like, not, that they would enjoy for themselves something maybe they haven't done for years. Be selfish on that day, if that's what you, because you, again, the best thing that you can do for your kids from afar, if you can only love them from a distance, is to be happy, to be happy, you, and as hard as that is, you've got to find happiness, because your kids, again, they're watching, sometimes even when you don't know it. You want them, you want, if they're ever in that position that you're in in life, just think of it. If my son or daughter are watching, and I know they're going to be in that position if they are, if they ever are, God forbid, how would I want them to see me handle this? You know, yeah. again, so you just put that out there and love and be selfish on that dude. Do something you enjoy as hard as it is and as small as it might be. Small steps. You know, one, uh, yeah. two steps forward, one, only one back. Just keep pushing forward and be happy, especially on that day. It's so true. You know, when you think about it, a lot of times parents will come and ask me, they'll say, what do I do? What do I, how do I reach out to my child that I have no access to? And I always direct, direct them to have, are, are your children old enough to be on Facebook? Or shoot, not even old enough. A lot of times, you know, kids know how to get on social media. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's, so, uh, our concept of old enough and not is, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So, Really, just create that, um, you know, just be the kind of parent that your children would fall in love with. And right. that they won't fall in love with a sad, pathetic person who's right. well with me and, and all that. But, and of course, you wouldn't want to say, look at how I'm free, you know, kind of, you know, like kind of rubbing it in their face. 
um, with all of the fun you're doing and the frolicking you're doing with, you know, without them. But there's sort of a balance in the middle of really focusing on the wonderful memories that you've had with your child or the something special about your child that you can share um, that's, that's positive. Uh, here's what I here's what I do, Danica, and I and I just walked on you. I do that off the air too. And that's why I apologize. Um, when it comes to uh, our children um, and what they're kind of doing without us, those positive intentions, as you said, and doing something that's positive, and I and I completely lost my train of thought, Danica. So pick up where you were, and I'm mm -hmm. going to pick back up on that because I had you said something that set my mind off, and I thought of something. And I will think of it in two seconds. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. I, I, I just know that um, there's just a really, uh, I think our intention for this show today is to give parents hope, help them to realize that, in fact, um, don't keep thinking of, well, someday I'll be happy. Someday I'll be happy when my children come back to me. Someday. Uh, because the thing is, is you will spend a whole lot of time being sad in the someday. Um, right. And you really have to say, you know what, I choose this moment. And I choose it and I get that this moment doesn't have my children in it, but I choose it anyway. Because if you choose, it, you know, you, that's you taking control of your circumstances and choosing, choosing whatever circumstance you have. So that, uh, because resisting it, it's like resisting the flu. It's more right. miserable to resist the flu than to succumb to it and say, I have the flu. Well, yeah, and I, this is what my point to that was. Whenever you're going to do something, whenever I do something, you just made me think of it again. I always think, and do, I encourage everybody to do this, what is my intention when I'm doing this? Where is it coming from? Am I posting this truly? Now, you can't lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. Am I doing this to spite somebody or to hurt somebody or dig them? Am I doing this out of anger? Am I posting this or saying this? out of jealousy or any of those, uh, those egoic traits, Danica, that pull most of us. My goal is always to get away from any of that, um, all those sort of things, because it brings me to that center. So again, am, and if you're doing it for anything other than love and positivity and genuine and authentic um, positivity, because again, you can't BS yourself, then I tell people, don't post it. If you're doing it to hurt somebody, don't do it. Sometimes, even if you're right, in, with certain things. I'm a firm believer in the law of attraction and the universe and uh, energies. I, and again, I've, I've seen it firsthand when I've been a good person, not a good person. Um, and I've seen it from afar. I don't mess with that. Um, so again, I don't put anything out there to, to hurt somebody. And if you're doing that and you wonder what, the universe knows whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. If you're doing things like that to hurt people under the guise of helping, you can't BS the universe and you wonder why is, are bad things happening. I'm doing such good things. Well, it's, maybe you're not. Maybe you have to look at your intention again. If, and I get there too. I'm about to post. And if there's any part of me that says I'm doing this even 1% to hurt somebody, delete. I don't do it. Don't do it. Even if yeah. I, I do not put that out there. Be your kid's hero, Danica. Be, be, the, be the parent you always should have had if you've had a rough childhood. Yes. And be your kid's hero. Let them see you living. And, and living and being happy, don't be ashamed of that. If you're, yeah. if you're working and you're a sufferer of parental alienation and you're working hard and you're trying, be happy. That's the best thing you can do if that's all you can give, Danica. You know, one thing that I've done for, for several years now is when, as self-improved, things that, that I find fulfilling, and, and one of the things I find fulfilling is is um, self-improvement programs. I just got off an amazing weekend, a national weekend called the Team Management and Leadership Program. Mm -hmm. And that program is designed, it's, it's all about being positive and creating things from nothing and, and creating a, the, the, the life of your dreams. Um, and you know, it, and there are, it's amazing. It's absolutely something that you should probably look up, but it, people are creating global projects that are way bigger than themselves, you know, providing clean drinking water for Africa, uh, just working, trying to take GMOs out of people's um, food source and, and working with governments and, and all that. And one of the reasons I have myself in this program is because the goal 
is to Custody Matters Live is just one component of what my vision is for uh, working for a family advocacy. And in 2020, it's my goal to have at least four conferences in North America. And then actually I have connections in Australia and the UK and in South America, where we, act, we put on conferences globally to, to support families, create coaching networks, and, and help these parents get through all of this. And to, to actually see a day when uh, parental alienation is completely not tolerated and unacceptable. And so Absolutely. that children can have a loving relationship with both parents. And, and that's what it's about. First of all, I applaud you. And, I, and even when you were just, we've talked about a little up here of your conference, and even just there, you got, you got bouncy, bubbly, and excited and energetic, even just talking about this conference. So I know uh, it was a great thing for you. So I applaud you. And again, it is all about you. It's just like, uh, you know, you can't control anything but yourself. Uh, just like your responses. It's just like how you, and again, you mentioned self-improvement. And that's what's about, the best revenge is improving yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, again, because you can't control what others do or say. You, you can't worry about it. Uh, Teflon, boom, boom, let it fly right off because it's useless. So you can only, what you do is make yourself better and let everybody else keep watching you. You get better. And keep doing what they said you could never do. Let that be, be your driving force yourself for you so you feel good. Again, self-improvement and empowerment is the way to go. And I always say that too, Danica. I don't motivate, I don't like, I don't motivate people because I can motivate anyone to vacuum my living room, but I want to empower, I mean, lasting. I want people to walk away and, and feel themselves, that power within themselves, not, um, you know, they get to the point where they don't need that, that crutch. They really feel it within themselves, that indestructible self-love that bleeds over, that genuine self-love that you just feel, and it bleeds over, and, and it starts oozing mm -hmm. uh, on other people. That, that's, that's the goal, I think, in this life. That's the key, love. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about love. I mean, it really is. Love is unconditional. It doesn't have an agenda to hurt someone. It is just, it's, it's just love is love. Um, and speaking of somebody that people that we dearly love, you have a friend um, named Rama, yes. Robin. Robin. Yes. With a Y. Thank you for bringing Robin up, Danica. Mm -hmm. um, if I could, thank you again. Uh, Robin Percy, Robin Sosha on social media. I, Robin Percy was her maiden name. I've known Robin since uh, I moved to Ware, New Hampshire when I was about 13 years old, 13 or 14. And I knew no one. I came from the city and I knew no one and we moved to the country. And I met Robin and she treated me so well, just like a friend. Um, and I didn't know anybody. And she, uh, I, we must have been speaking one day about my love and affinity for hockey and everything Boston Bruins. And she had said, uh, you should come down to, uh, the duck, uh, to Duck Pond, appropriately named, because it's on Duck Pond Road in New Hampshire. Uh, a lot of us get together and skate down there and play hockey. And I actually went there, and there were a ton of people there. And I met a ton of people because of that. And my point to that, too, is Robin was awesome, very maternal then, and very accepting, and introduced me without any hesitation to her friends she had known in a very cool way. She's always been a very loving person. And, and in saying that, um, Robin is going through the fight of her life right now. Um, she is battling breast cancer valiantly and, and doing it. I'm in awe of her every day. Um, so as she's doing that, um, she also unfortunately lost her fiance and passed away uh, a couple of months ago, if that. Um, so she's definitely um, under, under a lot of pressure right now in terms of financially. And I appreciate you, Danica, you and Wendy letting me put this out there. Um, Robin has a GoFundMe page for those who want to donate um, uh, to her uh, cause. She's, uh, she's, again, battling. I have a lot of private and personal conversations with her, and the way she approaches this battle in a loving way is unbelievable. And in saying that, one of the things that Robin wants to do and she's passionate about is uh, uh, therapeutic yoga. When she was uh, you know, first starting her battle with, with cancer, she looked up places down in her area in Florida. She's an English teacher. Uh, and there weren't many things down there in terms of uh, the, the sort of yoga programs that are very beneficial um, for a lot, for pain relief, a lot of different things. So Robin wants to get certified in being able to train this certain, uh, I don't know the exact name, I'll call it this, this therapeutic yoga. She wants to get certified so she can teach other people and kind of pay it forward and give it back. So for anybody out there, go look up Robin Sosha. 
Uh, it is uh, S-O-C-H-A, uh, for those wondering out there. Um, and again, Robin is a wonderful person going through uh, the battle of her life right now. And I want to be there to support her. Robin has a, a ton and a huge support system behind her. Uh, and I've touched base with a lot of people in high school that really push for Angelinas out there. Teresa Thompson, I went to high school with, and I had an awesome conversation with her a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations on our engagement herself and her uh, fiance, James, uh, to just name a few. Uh, and Robin is heavily involved in her church and uh, community activities and things like that. So I think uh, it, it'd be, it would be great for people to rally around Robin, and they have already. So go ahead and look Robin up. I'll share Robin's um, GoFundMe on my personal page. And if I could, in the show page, we'll do that as well if I could, Danica. Um, and, and again, thank you. Look her up. She also is on Instagram. Pink Sistership uh, is the name of her Instagram page. She does uh, scarves for t cancer patients. And a lot you'll see her stuff is so empowering and so motivational. And I'll, I'll say Teresa Thompson and I, again, as we were talking about Robin, we were both blown away with her strength and her approach. But that, again, this is how you defeat things. Yes. And Robin has, yeah, Robin has her off days too, but she acknowledges them and pushes forward. Again, her strength is uh, palpable. It's unbelievable. So thank you, everybody. And thank you for letting me put out the, that out there. I love you, Robin. And you're going to continue to get through this and hopefully we can get you some help. It's there. so important. You know, you're talking about cancer and um, cancer, the therapies these days are really great. And now it's no longer a death sentence when you when you get right. diagnosed with cancer. And some of the best things you can do is to just constantly just, oh, you just flood them with positivity, positive yep. energy. She right. keeping her spirits lifted up is as important and the, is the therapies that the doctors provide is, is just being positive. I know um, in going through my own custody battles, I developed two different forms of cancer that I overcame. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that it was through all of the, the stress that I was going through that manifested that. So if- well, hat, Hats off to you, Danica, on that. I'm glad that you came through that. So we could be sitting here enjoying each other's company right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, man, keep- if I could. Yeah, quickly, one of the, and speaking to that, God rest my stepdad, uh, he passed away of a brain cancer in 2010, but I will tell you, one of the things that I'm convinced was, was uh, harmful is that he wouldn't even acknowledge, we, he would not speak about his cancer, he wouldn't, it was very, again, he didn't tackle it in that way, very outwardly, and again, you see stories all the time, these miracles, where people are at less than a half a percent chance, or no percent chance, and amazingly, they overcome it. There's always hope. It's never impossible, ever. Sometimes yeah. the impossible just takes a little bit longer. But again, nothing is impossible in that right mindset. And sometimes, again, things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Again, um, we learn every day. And again, you just keep pushing forward and you keep loving. And again, I see it every day. And it's funny you said that about Robin mm -hmm. with, with mostly everybody. Uh, I usually end the conversation with love you or love you. I, and I genuinely mean it. My friend John Mondu has been friends with you literally. <laughs> Okay, so we ran out of time, and I'm so excited that we're going to have uh, other op more opportunities to have a conversation and and bring guests on, and it, this is going to be fun. Super it is, fun. it is, it is. And quickly, if I could, um, give a shout out to my wife and boys out there, and thank yourself, Danica, and Wendy Perry uh, again, Wendy F and Perry, as I uh, affectionately refer to her as behind the scenes, and yourself, Danica. I yeah. love you both, and I love everybody out there. Thanks for having me. It's been about six months since I've been on the air. It feels good. It feels great. Awesome. Thank you both. Well, thank you so much, Bud. You know, it's so awesome. It, it, you, you're, you've become a new friend. I'm super excited about our partnership and, um, and all the positive energy that you're bringing to our viewers, uh, giving them hope. And uh, on this Thanksgiving week, the thing that I share with you and share with the, our viewers is to stay in gratitude. Absolutely. And one last thing, Danica, if I could, to the people that you just mentioned, again, this is just part of your story and look at it that way. Okay. This in the moment sucks, but I can't wait to brag 
in the future how I overcame this. Oh, yeah, it killed most people, but it didn't kill me. It built me. Grow right. through it as you go through it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All, right. All right. See you next week. Bye-bye.